talk about cause and effect for a moment. But before we get started, I wanted to do a short grammar bite because the word effect can be spelled in two different ways. Effect is a noun, as in sound effects, and that one's spelled with an E. The word affect is a verb, as in the humidity affected my hair. But when we speak, sometimes the words sound the same, and then when we start to write, we aren't sure which one to use. So if you're going to be using effect as a noun, it's an E. If you're going to be using it as a verb, it's an A. Okay, so cause and effect writing. So cause and effect analysis requires us to look for connections among various causes and effects and then analyze our findings. So the whole purpose of cause and effect is not to argue or persuade anybody. It's to look at the reasons why something happened and or what the results were. In order to think about causes and results, we must think about how we connect with what we read. The causal analysis is the most effective type of causal writing because it goes from finding remote causes as well as the more obvious and immediate ones. So for example, George Michael passed away peacefully in his sleep. It's strange in this day and age for a 54 year old man to die by natural causes. So people were looking for remote causes. And sometimes in the search for remote causes, this is where people start getting some crazy theories. But what would cause a, a otherwise healthy 54 year old man's heart to stop? Could it be heart disease, high cholesterol? Was it some type of overdose? Was it some type of overdose as a result of chronic drug use? Or could it have been related to something having to do with HIV or AIDS? So a causal chain occurs when the result of one action is the cause of another. So think about like a chain reaction. One A causes B causes C causes D and so on. So to illustrate this, Mark did not pay his electric bill. So his electricity was turned off. Then the refrigerator lost power, so his food spoiled, and Mark went hungry that night. So all of this problem with Mark being hungry started by him not paying his electric bill. If anything had been interrupted at any point, the next thing would not have happened. Immediate and ultimate effects. So a cause can have immediate results and then later on ultimate results. So if you think about a tax proposal, this ha these uh, get on our ballots from time to time in um, from school districts or cities or counties where they want to levy an extra tax to provide additional services. If you just look at, I'm going to have to pay more for something, most people would say, nope, I don't want to pay more. I don't I don't want that service. But if you look at the grander scope of things, it might change your opinion. So for example, if there's a local proposition to uh, increase taxes to maybe a project having to do with the beautification of a neighborhood, there will be additional costs to individuals. The tax rate will increase. But it will create more jobs. You know, more people will be um, having to actually create that space. Perhaps people will then be able to hold events in the space, like have outdoor weddings or outdoor photography or things like that. Um, it might lead to better education in that if you have a more beautiful area of town, more people want to move into it, so the demand for better schools will be there. If you do have more schools that come into the area, you're going to get additional state funding because uh, public schools are supported by state funds. Um, more people will be employed because you'll need teachers and people working at the school. So that could lead to fewer people on welfare or fewer people in the area who are unemployed. So when you think about a tax increase and then you think about all those good things that could come of it, it's not as much of a burden on most people, even though they do feel they will have to pay more for the tax.